What's up, everybody? Making song bringer today. I'm I'm taking um the the leaves off of the trees, and I'm gonna put them in separate different uh, sprites so that I can shift the color, the hue, for example, of the leaves, and leave the color of the bark alone. And also, this is gonna be really cool because I'll be able to do certain areas like the dark. Um, I think this might be over here is like the, some dark. Yeah, here's a dark area. This dark area will have some more, some of these trees will actually not even have leaves. It'll look all like creepy with um, just bare branches and stuff. So yeah, that's what that's the goal for today. Take all the leaves off the trees and, and then start playing with that. Play with hue shifting at that point. So I'm gonna get into the overworld, and I've only got three trees to really mess with, and these bushes too. These bushes all, well actually these bushes barely have. <clears throat> Yo, yeah, what's up? EU friendly times? <laughs> all right, Hazenris. It's so crazy, you get lag every time. All right, yeah, so yeah, the goal today is to take the leaves off of the trees and the bushes. So I'm going to start right now with these the trees. And then we'll do the bushes. All right. What's up, Momir? Well, I guess I need to restructure this now a little bit. So I'm going to get the sprites or the slices section. Basically, I need a, th a third type of tree. So these are 80 tall. Let's make this whole document 80 more. Yeah, I'm good, man. Doing great. Oh, something that's um, pretty interesting from yesterday is I actually started the whole process of making the foes data-driven. So now all the foes can be put in groups and it's all in this really, really nice data driven method here. So for example, this little, this is one kind of enemy group here. It's a blob and a blob two. And this only occurs at Z level zero. Only if the difficulty is zero to 0 0.5. If so, it puts blobs between 33 and 33 blobs and between one and three blob twos. So then, um, and then this also has really, really nice other types of elements to help this system become very various and stuff. The Zerbs, for example, only appear if there's sand or in the mountains. So that's going to make the Zerbs appear in the right areas. Um, and then I can also mess with flags. For example, um, if the if the if it's a level, for example, Z is one through nine, um, and it has a somewhat high difficulty, it puts four pulverizers if it's a corridor. And so I can come up with lots of different groups of things. Like maybe I want to do bats too. Which has a little bit higher difficulty. And same amount of bats, but also has some pulverizers. You know what I mean? So there and is so as it goes through, it matches areas based on all these different criteria. And then all the matching ones, it selects among those randomly. And then what's great also is it can it can make sure not yet but I have the idea of making it so it doesn't place the same group, um, like adjacent to each other. So it will never do that. So that'll be cool. Yo, ciao, bello, Mars of Power. What's up? How's it going, man? 
How is difficulty determined? Um, difficulty is determined right now based on um, how deep it is. So that's in the overworld, that's based on how far it is from the start. So this would be a difficulty of zero right here at the home screen. And then all the way in the corner would be 1.0. Both these corners are about 1.0. So that's how it does difficulty for the overworld. And for the um, for the dungeons, it actually uses the dungeon generator to, to do that. So as it goes and starts placing things, it adds one to the difficulty. And then once it's very once it's all done placing all these areas and stuff like that, it goes and it normalizes all the difficulties. So that it also kind of works out so that the farther away you are, the higher the difficulty. Oh, dang, man. Yeah, the crew. Yeah. Alessandro, Daniele. Yeah, what's that? What'd you learn? What'd you see? So today I'm working on making um, making the trees not have any leaves in the, the art so that I can color them and take the leaves off in certain cases, leave the trees bare. Yeah. Oh, swatches. Nice. Yeah, so this is part of that. Today I'm working on, basically still I'm working on the swatches. So, for example, each each swatch, this is one swatch here, has a plant color, and it's, already, it's all set to white right now. But the plant color I want to use to actually change the hue of just the leaves. So that was kind of one of the problems with the existing hue shift was that it changed the bark as well as the branches or the leaves and the bark color really should just stay constant and then the leaf color is going to thing be the thing that changes nice cool good for you red lion what's your game called So first I gotta make um make some slices. Whoops. It's called Untitled? Sweet name. Awesome. I'm joking, I'm joking. I know I know you you're coming up with a towel. That's cool. Nice, man. Do you have screenshots and stuff, or is, this, is it early prototype? What phase are you in? Right? Cool, man. I'm excited to see. <laughs> oh, have you seen Minecraft's new, um, the new Microsoft Glass thing? It works with Minecraft. Nice, man, nice. Right? Actually, Untitled is kind of a cool name for a for a game. What's up, Coin54? Yo, thanks for following. 
Okay, so yeah, I'm going to leave the, the zero tree is going to be the bear tree. One is going to be the tree animated. And two, wait, uh, I don't know. That might not work. Oh, yeah. Oh, you haven't seen it? Oh, you got to see this. Yeah, here's the holo. It's called the Hololens. Here's the demo at E3 video. To show you how. Oh, you seen the original demo? Oh. All right. Okay, so when it creates trees, it might need to create these a little bit differently now. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, check that out. That's really cool. Yo, what's up, Clock? Man, it's going great, dude. Today I'm working on making the trees so that they don't have leaves to, to start with, right? So they'll just be bare trees. And, um, and that will allow me to place the leaves on at runtime, right? So I'll be able to uh, also color the leaves at runtime. So I'm going to actually make all these the leaves for these trees all the same hue so that they can be hue shifted and it'll look really cool. So I can play around with procedurally shifting hues for all the leaves and that will allow me to really really dial in the coloring for all these new swatches and the new areas and stuff like that. And um, also since yesterday I've been I've done um, this cool foes list so I can have groups of types of foes and they can all match these criteria and it's all data driven. So that's pretty cool. Right? All right, so here's where it animates. This animates wind with percent %s, percent %d. Percent %s is the, the key or the prefix, which is tree. Percent %d is the r, so that's like zero, one. That's the type of tree. Yeah, so this animation right here is only gonna work if it's zero and one. So we need like a bear. We need a bear one. What's up, Nano? Yo. Yo, 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 yo. Okay, I'm gonna, I'd be crazy if I didn't make these top ones the bear. Oh wait, actually this is going to be tree bear zero one and this is going to be tree o o this one's going to be tree o one This one's one oh. This one's one one. This one's two oh. This one's two one. Okay. Should be all set up now. Turn that off. Hide these slices. Well, let me move these trees first. Yeah, yeah, totally. Seasons, exactly. Yeah, now that I've got these leaves off, that, that can allow seasons. But especially to the, the dark, creepy area, the, the dark sections, those ones are going to have a real high random chance to, for trees to not even have leaves. 
Yeah, clock, I did. Yep, the transitions look great. Let me show you. So, like here's one area. This is going to be a totally different style than the one below. We've got, see, and it, it blended, it's going to blend the watercolor. I guess this is not a very good area to show it. Let me go over to that area where it's really really makes a difference oh yeah here it is so see this is that area we were at yesterday where this blend and also check out how awesome this the the mountains blend you don't even notice it but this is blending into more purple mountain colors because it's blending all nine areas around it. That's why there's such gradual transitions. But you can see, you can see the bottom of these rocks down here are a little more purple than the rocks up here on the top. So it's blending those. And then also there was this one section over here where it was blending a lot of these water elements that um, this is a good one to show basically. So yeah, I got this all working too. You can see that over here on the right, it's a little more blue water. And over here, it's starting to get, bit, get to be more green water. And also I fixed the bridges too, so the bridges are actually colored as well. So yeah, all the color blending is just working like, like a dream come true. And um, yeah, so I'm excited today to get the plants all being able to shift their hues and also getting the lily pads so they are shifting their hues too. So they'll, they'll kind of complement the water Hey, nice, right on. Cool, man. Oh, sweet, so you got kind of like an overworld, kind of like Final Fantasy. <laughs> I like this guy over here drinking beer. Cool, man, Do you, are you doing your own art too? What's up, Magus? Yes, it is, it totally is. Every day is like one more little dream come true. Oh, what I was saying is that it looks great, dude. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I like the beer. You definitely can't go wrong with beer. Am I right? Okay, so I'm copying these trees up to the top so I can create some bare branches. Oh, nice. Cool. You're the first person I've heard of using RPG Maker. How do you like it? A bear hidden in the bear branches? <laughs> nice one. Yeah, oh man, you know what I was thinking last night? I'd really like to have a um raccoons and just like other little creatures like that. Maybe not perfectly raccoon like, but sort of quasi raccoon y. That's even a word. Uh, good thought here. Um, if it's less than 05, so a dense center, it, it, there's no mix. No, I don't think so because it's blending all nine areas, right? So you get that blend of the current area as well. 
I think the I think the code worked out. The the visually it worked out like how totally how I imagined. So I'm really not gonna mess with it at this point. But I'm pretty sure it is correct that it because it uses that that center area in the blend. So I'm pretty sure it's correct already. Nice, right on. Uh no, no, like um the raccoon would be just a totally not even an enemy, like an NPC. Raccoon City. Wait, wait, I don't get it. I don't get it. How is that a pun? Raccoon City. Help me get it. Oh, it's from Resident Evil? Oh. I, man, no, sorry, I haven't played all of that game. <laughs> right? That's why I would not make them able to be even killed. So the raccoons would kind of sit near the trees, right? This is what I was kind of imagining, right? They're like these little sneaky guys that as soon as you get anywhere near, they run into the trees and they just disappear. Yeah, like an Easter egg, but yeah, but really it's it's there on a lot of screens, so it's not really a secret or anything. But maybe it would be a secret or an Easter egg at some point. Like you can, I don't know, catch a raccoon or bait a raccoon or get some item by tricking a raccoon. Right, yeah, yeah, I forgot about those. Yeah.
What's up, Hald or Bongos? Hald your Bongos. You're, are you asking me to play music? I wish I could, man, but sorry, I have to upload these videos to YouTube. So every day these get archived on YouTube and whatever, and YouTube flags my videos whenever there's music in them. So sorry about that, but if you want to play your own music, I think that's probably the best solution. This is more of a talking stream because of the whole copyright restrictions on playing music. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, cool idea, King Nothing. Alright, it's going on the ideas list. Lightning strikes a tree. Yeah, yeah, I know. I haven't really found any music that's good, though. That's like that, but... I really haven't looked that hard, so maybe there is some great music out there I just don't know of that's totally available. The Titan Sword, yes. Didn't I put that on the list already? Tehe. Connor Groove, do I have a schedule? Are you talking about an overall schedule? Like, I gotta get this item done by this date? Or are you talking about like a daily schedule? Like, I stream at this time and every day. Did I just teach myself? No, I learned from YouTube tutorials. And I watched a ton of YouTube videos of speed art. So I watched people make pixel art like for a whole year before I ever even like touched my graphics tablet. But buying a graphics tablet was was like definitely fundamental to learning how to make art. These are pretty much necessary in my opinion. But I don't know. I, I've seen the dude Chicken Sword, Mig Miguelito, he doesn't even use a graphics tablet. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, my screen, stream schedule? Yeah, I stream daily in the afternoons Pacific time. So it's, um, I started today at about 3 p.m. Pacific time. Sometimes I start more like 4. That's usually been about the time I start. Um, but I've been trying to stream earlier, like 2 p.m., 3 p.m. for people in the European and, uh, time zones. Because there's lots of y'all. Okay, that ought to do right there. Hey, what's up, Vlad? Am I working on the game when not streaming? Yep. A hell of a lot. I probably work 10 hours a day, and I stream for about two. So I, get, I do a hell of a lot more work each day. Yeah, thanks, guys. You know. Yeah, it's been a while since I worked 12 hour days, but definitely during the Kickstarter, that was like a 12 hour day type thing. So, okay, I'm wondering um, about this, how, where I should put the shadow, because this shadow, I think I'm just going to leave the shadow as part of this for now. Yeah, this will be shadow. Okay. And then they, these, I'm just going to delete the tree from these. And I'll probably have to blur out these shadows a little bit more to make it just look more like it's not, re and it's not really more indistinct, like not really that there's a leaf shadow. It's more of just a general shadow from this tree.
All right, so I'm going to put back in some shadow. I need a black color, 20%. Maybe Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your creative advice you need? Stick with the mushroom. What uh which what kind of advice you need, Vlad? What's up, Chaos Gaming? Yo. Hey, I haven't seen you on in a while, man. Hope you've been good. Uh, what the heck's going on? Oh. Got the platforms right. So I want to make the platform that kills the mushroom. But it's a mushroom, so it has to be some sort of kitchen appliance. Oh, okay, so you want something that he can jump on and he dies? What would kill a mushroom? You could do like a mouth. You could put like somebody's mouth right here and just like <laughs> eats it. That would kind of be big, bigger than a platform. Um, acid. Oh, there you go. How about a petri chip? How about a petri dish full of acid? Oh, Chaos Gaming. Yeah, man, it's coming great, dude. Yes, there's a release date. It's going to be um, sometime between January and March. Here's what the game looks like about right now. So, yeah, it's been it's probably been a while since you've seen it, but um, there's so many new items and stuff. This is the Fire Sword, so you can shoot these different, like, um, projectiles, and whenever you hit an enemy, it creates fire. But you can also be hit by your own fire. So... Um, yeah, there's frogs, all these, like, grass, there's different types of areas. There's a lot that's been done. The overworld is really a lot more interesting. The levels are more interesting. 
There's tons of new items. Um, there's the cactus. I don't even know if you ever saw the cactus. You can eat cactuses. And this gives you psychedelic powers so you can see through secret walls. So, yeah, man. The game's come along great. And I'm really, really excited. Oops. Blender, burning platform. What's up, Neo Zoom? Thanks, man. Would I classify this as a dungeon crawler? No, I would not. Dungeon crawlers are typically more just about the dungeons. This game has an overworld as well as dungeons. It's a lot like Zelda. I would I would consider this a Zelda-like game. If you're not going to call it a Zelda-like game, I guess it would also be considered sort of a roguelike game. Actually, a road rogue light, or a rogue like like, in essence, because it's not turn based; it's action, and it's um, yeah. Sweet man, yeah. If you want to buy it, you can pre-order it right now, and that gets you your name in the credits. So, um, pre-ordering. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Um, all the backers on the Kickstarter get their name in the credits, and also anyone who orders the game right now and pre-orders. You get your name on the credit. So if you want um, if you want to get the game and you want your name in the, right here on the main menu, just pre-order it. Um, and you can pre-order it at uh, songbringer.com slash pre-order. There's that link. Yeah, clog it totally does feel good. Yo, what's up, Ekloff? Oh yeah, right. Yeah. See, yeah, the secret doors. I remember. Yeah, right. That was so long ago. Oh man, that was before the Kickstarter. Ooh, oh, a burner, yeah, a burner would actually work really well too. Okay, for some reason, I selected this whole thing and then I undid it. And that just messed up the whole selection. Photoshop. Ah, what the hell? Why is this not working? It just let me do this a second ago. Oh my god, it just... All of a sudden it works now. I don't get it. I don't get it. Nano, yo, I'm making the trees not have leaves anymore. So, well, they're gonna have leaves, but... I'm separating the trees from the leaves. So that way I can shift the hues of all the leaf colors more accurately. Because before when I was shifting hues and blending colors and all that stuff, they looked really weird having bark that was just a different color, like purple bark, for example. But it was kind of cool having purple leaves. So but it, so the, the thing is now, now that I have these separated, or well, once these are separated, um, I'll be able to procedurally change the hue of all of the leaves and... Um, and then that will allow me to match up the color swatches a lot better. So, um, like I can go into my color swatch for certain areas and change the plant colors and it will look good, hopefully. And also it allows me to do seasons and also make it some, so some areas will have a tendency. So to not even have leaves like the dark, creepy, um, graveyardy jungle area, that one will have more trees that don't even have leaves. Ooh, electric.
Yeah, so every day the game gets a little better. Cool. Okay, next tree. Too witty. Whoops. Uh, you know what? I don't know. There's a, that's a, such a, um, such a good point, right? It's, but the, really the reason it's, it's actually a little bit better to have things all in one layer is because sometimes it can get really overwhelming having a billion layers. Like for example, this the one image I did of the, um, the the poster. Check out how many layers there are in the poster. It's like ridiculous. Sometimes you can't even find what you're looking for. I mean, there's there, this poster, but there's all these layers of light. There's all these logo layers. There's a million character layers, and there's even more background layers. So. Sometimes it can be really confusing. It's like, even if you know where a certain pixel is, it can be really confusing to ed try and edit it because maybe if I edit this to that layer, it doesn't quite look right because it's being um, affected by all these light layers and other layers on top of it and all this random stuff. So, I don't know, there's benefits to doing layers and there's also benefits to not doing layers. <clears throat> Um, I'm painting shadows here because I want the shadows to be applied by the leaves, see? So see this right here? There's these dark parts of the tree, right? This is kind of like a shadow. Um, this is where I want the shadow. So if it's just the branches and the leaf, or like this, I don't need to have that those dark parts So until it has the leaves. So that's why I'm putting the shadow inside the leaves. I'm probably doing it a little bit too much in a few of these areas, so I imagine I'll probably tone it back a little bit. Right? 
all kind of depends, I think. Um, yeah, it will be, but since it's it's black, it won't actually shift the hue. See what I mean? That's the beauty of black and white. You shift the hue and they stay the same. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, HSV is kind of a really nice thing to get used to because um, you can, you can really, it's really easy to shift hues and create, you know, I don't know, hues I just, I guess, are really like, Beautiful and powerful thing. Awesome, man. Cool. Yeah. I'd love to hear if you do. What is, why is my computer working hard right now? Kernel task? Hmm. 
Hmm. I gotta get some ice today. That's it. Stay nice and cool. What's up, Nick's Disco? <laughs> You're kind of cold. <laughs> Nick's Disco. What's up? Thanks, man. What are you What are you talking about? Creating a game might become a dream you might never fulfill. What do you mean? Is it something you don't want to fulfill, or is it something you feel you can't fulfill, or what? Will there be any cheats? Yes, there will. There's actually going to be a cheat cave. So you're going to have to find this cave inside the game. And uh, it'll be there'll be a genie inside the cave. And it'll be the game genie code ca genie. So you actually give him like Game Genie codes, just like Nintendo, and he can. Um, that's how he. That's how you enter your cheats. Could be an alter ego of me. Oh, maybe that's where. So you guys, I'm getting, I get requests every one, every now and then to put myself in the game somewhere. So maybe that would be a good way to do it, right? It's a totally rare place. You got to find this whole genie cave. Yeah. No, you can only enter the cheats in the cave. The cheat codes are up to you to try and figure those out, or find on the internet or whatever. Oh, oh, I hear you, man. I hear you. Yeah, family takes a lot of time, but but it's important, you know. I guess I'm lucky because I, you know, all I have is my fiance at this point, so we don't really have a family yet. But one day I will have a family, and then it will probably be harder to spend as much time as I do. But it's also really cool that I don't have a job and I started this game without a job and thankfully the Kickstarter succeeded because that's what enabled me to keep on making the game full-time so if the Kickstarter hadn't succeeded this wouldn't be a reality what's up excellence <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, man. If you ask, I'll definitely tell you. I'll tell anybody that asks, but I ain't gonna go ruining it for anybody by just telling without them asking. You know what I mean?
Yeah, the wizard. He could be a cool NPC. Nice. Thanks, Speedy Flip. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Thanks, Disco. Cheers, man. So what do you do for work? What's your everyday work? Oh, yeah, Speedy Flip. Cool. Yeah, I was asking Disco, actually, what he does for work. We were talking about how his dreams and stuff, but that's cool, man. What do you do at, what do you do at school, by the way? What are you studying? Preparing computers, assisting people with their computers. Oh, nice. Have you seen the IT crowd? You guys recommended, somebody recommended here on the stream for me to watch the IT crowd. Have you tried turning it off and turning it back on? What? Johannes? Kepler, Copernicus, Archimedes. That's your that's what you're working on for a degree? Yeah, it's E Ground. Yeah. Is the goat looking monster still here? Yeah, oh yeah, there's two of them. There's the big goat monster and then there's a little goat monster. Um I can show you a picture of the big goat monster guy, the boss. Yeah, so this guy's pretty giant. Like, your character is only that big compared to him. This is him dying. Yeah, there's lots of explosions going off too, so it looks a lot better than that. Oh, you're in the eighth grade. Oh, oh, that's what that's what you're studying. Oh, now I get it. Oh, right on. Yeah, you guys are so young. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Your whole future ahead of you. Nice graphic designers or game dev. Sweet. Totally cool. You got out young. <laughs> oh. Man, speaking of ice, dude, it is hot today. I need some ice myself. Galacta Knight, 11th grade. Sweet, man. I started making games when I was in the 9th grade. And never stopped. I've been making games since for over 20 years now. So you can do it, man. You can, it doesn't matter how old you are. Especially, It's actually better to start when you're younger because then you have way more free time. Yeah, that's right, Chaos Gaming. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I kind of changed that. There's all these huge explosions that go off when you kill bosses now. 
There you go. Nice. Nice. That's um When I started, we had Zork. Me too. That's when I started too. But it was a little bit more towards the Windows 95 days. Like right as I started making games, Windows 95 came out. Yeah, text games. How many grades do we have in the U.S.? We have 12 in our general schooling. 12. So actually kindergarten. So there's 13 grades. There's kindergarten and there's 12 regular grades. And then usually four to eight years of college, depending on your type of degree. Why are you worried about making it happen? Uh, I really got to give you my advice for beginners here. If you haven't seen these extra credit videos, you, you might have seen these already, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this link anyways. Advice for new game devs. Check this out. Check out this whole series. Actually, I would watch every one of these videos before you even ever start a game because they're so good. But this is a link to right in the middle of this whole thing where he's he's talking about making your first game. <laughs> Commodore 64. Yeah. Oh. Disco, man, if you want to learn where to start, check out these videos. Seriously. These apply to anyone, whatever your age. These, man, these these sum up. I always try and get, I always tried to give my own advice, but really, their videos really sum it all up so well. Where did I go to college? I went to college only for a year and a half, so I'm not really a good example of somebody, like, completing college or whatever, but, um... I went to the Oregon Institute of Technology in Oregon. Has anyone played Atari? Of course, man. <laughs> Sheila Boof. What's up, the Grim Gary? What's up, man? Today I'm making I'm making these trees. So they don't have leaves by default, right? So you can I can add on leaves and I can color shift specifically just the leaves it's gonna be cool once it's done oh oh well that's this is exactly why I, I recommended those videos to you because that the third video after that video I just shared you there is talking about scope and so if you feel like you're you're worried you're not be able to be, make it in the schedule you have, maybe you need to scope it back a little bit. And those videos talk a lot about scope and how it's why it's so important, especially when you're first starting making games. So this tree is going to have a little more like spindly leaves, spindly branches. Yeah, totally. They're great. Not even, not just, not just the ones about make, how to make games, but how Man, they really do have kick-ass videos. Oh, oh, so it's just saying, you're just saying you have a lot already on your plate. Uh, I see. Oh, it's Arcane, what's up, man? Sorry, man, I don't know how I missed you. Oh, there you are. Sorry, man. What's up, Arcane? 
Welcome to the stream. Don't be a sad panda. I didn't mean it. Yeah. Right? Well, um... You know, you never it's never too start too late to start. Um I just started making art a couple of years ago. So, um I've yeah, I honestly believed I would never ever be an artist cuz for 20 years I was just a programmer on every project I ever did. I was always the programmer. Everybody all my friends would be like, "Hey, Nat, can you program this game? We're going we got an artist, blah blah blah." Or I was in a company with other artists and I was a programmer and there was like one other programmer or Something like that, you know? I never believed I would ever have the art skills because I was just like, you know what? Programming's my thing. I'm good at programming and that's all I am. I'll never be an artist. I never I never believed it would, it would be possible for me. Um, and then I finally just started making actual real art. I started making paintings. And um, I, would, I was watching all of these YouTube videos, all these speed painting videos, right? I would watch speed painting all the time and I got so into it and I was like, yeah. This is cool. Speed painting is awesome because you watch an artist create something amazing really quickly. And I did that for a whole year, two years actually. I was just like watching all these, soaking up all these videos, never really making that much art, but just soaking it all up. And then finally, I, I bought a graphics tablet. I let that sit on my desk for a whole year. I never used it. But then finally, I started picking it up and I was like, you know what? I can be an artist too. So. All I was trying to say there is, if you have the time and you want to learn that kind of stuff, it's possible. Yeah. Yes, there you go. Right, Nano. Uh. Yeah, Nano. Was developing on Windows 95 way different than today? Not way, not, I guess not. Not way different. And it, we still had Visual Studio back then. Um, it was like four hundred dollars or something like that. You had to buy Visual Studio. There was no free version. That was kind of different. There was no free tools, so like it was. It was more just like the tools and stuff were way not as good as they are today. Tools today are incredible. They're practically free everywhere you look. There's some awesome rad free tool to make games with. Um, yeah, making games today is just a lot better because of that. But in essence, there was still the Windows API. Um, OpenGL wasn't as big back then. It was there was like DirectX started coming out, and DirectX was the thing. OpenGL was kind of cool and getting started, but it wasn't as awesome. Quake and stuff like that was using OpenGL. Um, Doom had its own engine, but Quake started using OpenGL. So then it started getting to be a little more popular. And OpenGL in general started going up and up. Uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't too much different than today. What was really a lot different was making games in DOS. DOS was a lot different. That you had to do so much custom stuff just to get the time. You had to like call an interrupt. It was crazy. Yeah, the whole process was a lot slower. What's up, Anoanet? Yo, yo. Can we have Warner Brothers twenty? Tweety on a tree? Tweety. Yes, that'll have to be a separate character. Um, but yeah, I can I can make a Tweety. I was just talking about making a raccoon. Do I work with Ga Unity 3 or Game Maker? No, I use um, Cocos 2DX. This is the engine that I use. It's open source, it's cross-platform, it's C++, and it's awesome. But I recommend using it only if you know C++. Yeah, see, there you go. Yeah. I know what you mean. Not now. You don't have the time. But I hope that little talk kind of inspired you that it's possible. Even even programmers, even people with no design experience can learn art. Borland was hot. Borland. I forgot all about Borland C++. <laughs> yeah, Borland, the tool. <laughs> Oh, is that what it was? 3D effects? Yeah. Yeah. This is all ringing a bell.
Okay, that's good enough to try, right? I've got enough of this done where I've got three different trees, all their leaves are in separate animations, separate graphics and stuff like that. We're ready to export this and start doing the code part. Oh, this isn't a render video. Whips. You just save for web. Wistaso, what's up, man? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, OpenGL just it wasn't as good at first. Today it's the thing, though, man. I like it when something like that get becomes a standard because then you know what to learn and you know you know what works in a lot of different platforms and stuff. I'm gonna take away this ice now. We have Vulcan. What's Vulcan? Oh, Vulcan cars and stuff. Omni Shift. Whoa, what's up, man? What's going on is I'm making these. Um, I'm working a lot on colors this um, this week. Color swatches, color schemes. Um, the game has come a long ways as far as its variety. Right? There's these different areas, different like colors per area. Like this area has a color swatch that's like the mountains, right? Sort of this orangish ground. This grayish patches of rock or whatever that is. Um, the you can see the rocks themselves are sort of a grayish, brownish, orangish sort of thing. And then I go down this area, and this is a totally different color swatch area. There's like a foresty green grass. There's blue water. This area is also that color, that style. But then up here, there's a totally different style over here. There's this dark area. And in this dark area, I want to have more dead trees, like just no branches and stuff. So that's why I've drawn all these different trees today without their branches. So I can do dead trees and I can also shift just the hue of these plants. So I'm going to be shifting hues today too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't look like it is. What's up, Ladder Thief? Yo! Yeah, dead trees and sh color shifting. Hmm. Wow. That was definitely looking like higher quality. Wow. I didn't even hear hear Vulcan before. Yeah, ATI cards. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start putting this together. Um I in Yeah, I'm going to put my mouse down, or my graphics tablet down for a second. Switch over to the mouse and work on the tree. Trees. Oh, let just less CPU overhead. Ah. Okay, so each tree is going to have two entities. It's going to have an entity for its um, trunk and it's branches and an entity for its leaves. So this remains the same. This is where we're going to do the bear tree. So this is da da bear that color white two zero R three is less than one twenty eight. No. Yeah. Collision component. Yes. No collision component though for the, the leaves. 
That might be enough to actually get this working. Let's see. OmniShip, is this going to be on mobile? Yes, it's going to be on iOS. Maybe Android. We'll see. Hmm. Love music. What's up, man? Thanks, man. Will they have scary animation? Ooh. Ooh, I don't know. I guess they should, right? Let's see if this works. Did I export it? Here, let's let's turn off the entity for leaves. So let's see if we have some dead trees. Mm. So what company makes Vulcan? Oh, so it did work. Yeah, nice. Okay. So let's see what that's like when I add back in the leaves and start color shifting. I need a new flag for color shifting. There's K render blah, 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 frozen living glow. I want K render um, K render hue shift. So if a render component has this hue shift flag, that's when it will apply the whole hue shifting. To, the, to whatever the hue shift is. Oh yeah, that'd be cool too. Um, yeah, I can use pretty much the same API, or a, I mean behavior as the, the crab guys. Oh, oh, okay. So it's kind of an OpenGL thing. Or is it is it developed by OpenGL then? I don't know Open. Yeah, me bag totally. Sword and Sorcery is one of my primary influences on this game. I'd say, if anything, this is game is sort of like the Legend of Zelda, the original first Legend of Zelda game, mixed with sort of an art style similar to Sword and Sorcery. And a lot of other games now are using this sort of art style too. Uh, where is that? Oh, here it is. Yeah, here's where we want to do sh set hue shader. If it has this um, K render hue shift flag. So that will enable the hue shifter. And then I can use the color in, um, in here in colors. I can actually shift the colors of say, let's start with the mountains. So if I want to do a color, I'm gonna make this is like my default color right here, this green color. So if I wanted to do something else, actually, let's make that. Let's shift it a little bit. No wait, let's go to the the light area, and let's shift it a little bit. So let's move this hue maybe closer yellow like that and then put it on and that should shift all the hues for the plants oh it's a joint project oh okay chronos group oh oh wow oh cool that's nice it's good to see we're getting our um our 3d cards to the next level Okay, so when we're creating this tree, we want to use this new flag, but only on the the leaves. So K render hue shift. All right, 
So that should shift the hue of all the trees, but only in this lighter colored area. So that would be south of where I start. So it'll have a sweet 8-bit soundtrack. That's right, my friend. It already does. It's not 8-bit. It's not perfectly 8-bit, but if you want to check out the tracks that are already in the game, they play during the game, but they only play at certain times. A lot like Sword and Sorcery as well. So you know how Sword and Sorcery, it doesn't play the songs over and over and over. It plays them at specific times while you're in the game. That's the point of this game too. It's going to be mostly an ambient game, except for certain sections where you hear a song, but you only hear the song once. So, but anyways, if you want to hear the, the songs that I've already written, here's um, a couple tracks on my SoundCloud you can check out. Yeah. Hey, what's up, PMC? Mm. It could be nice if trees can move. Yeah, so that would that would work with um the idea of bringing a tree to life. So it'd be a lot like the crab enemy. Yeah. All right, let's see if this works. So, I guess I should probably do a more radical hue shift to just really. Yeah, it worked. See that. So these, these yellow trees are now looking more orange. But their but their bark has stayed the same. Oh, this is what I wanted. Okay, so let's do the thing. But let's go even more towards red. Let's do all the way there, almost brownish. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to my colors. Set the colors for the light area to that. Whoa, see that? Now it's really red. But that's the point. I wonder why some of it still looks greenish though. Hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's opening up a whole world of possibility for color now. And just looking better than it did with the other. Okay, so what I wanted to start doing now is doing... I want to be able to do... I want to be able to color shift within... So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make these yellow trees the same green color. And then within the code, I'm actually going to make it so some of these yellow trees turn into, into actually be yellow. Yeah, it's true, right? I don't have a lot of red yet. Cherry trees, they are. Okay, so... I actually want to check in this overworld.psd so I don't actually overwrite accidentally. I have a backup if I do if I don't like this, but um OpenGL faster than DirectX on Windows? No way. Oh, that was 2012, though. OpenGL seems to have a smoother, more efficient pipeline. Huh. Oh. Hmm.
Yeah, I did. What's up, Bit Suds? Um, actually, Jonah one nine. That's this is so tempting. I wish I could do that. Um, but the reason I'm not going to do that just yet, I might, I might end up doing that. But the the reason I'm not doing that at first is because look at this subtle difference in hue and just this these leaves right here. This hue, eighty six. This hue, ninety seven. This hue, one hundred twenty four. See what I'm saying? These are there's a lot of hue shifting going on already in this little thing, and I want to keep that. So I just want to shift overall the whole hue of this sprite here. And so it keeps those differences in hue in the graphics. So even if I want this to be red, it'll still have sort of a, a balanced shift of red color for its... I don't know if that actually works, though, as far as shifting goes. Some of these shifts wouldn't actually work. You know what I mean? So if I went to... So there was like a deeper green and there's there was like a lighter green, right? And so if I shift the whole thing, it's going to have sort of a a lighter yellow for its its yeah, actually this is true. If I go I can't really shift much more than here with this technique. And I can't really shift I guess all the rest of this is free game, but Right about there is the point where it's gonna, that technique's gonna break down. I think. Uh, yeah, I might have to actually. Oh, what? Oh, sorry, guys. Shader level palettes, what? Wistaso. I'll have to look into this some more. I mean, I've always seen that I could do that. I've always known I could do this with the shader to just shift colors. But I always thought it would be expensive. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is possible. Yeah, okay. So, um... Is it back? Okay. All right, cool. What's up, Broba? No, the, the reason to put that, are you talking about that te technique we were just talking about? The This technique over here that we were talking about, Wissiso is mentioning, it has to be put in a shader because that's kind of the only way you can do it. I guess you could put it, I guess you could shift all the colors in the texture as you load it. But anyways, okay, I've got a backup of that. I want to shift this thing now so it's all... this hue. So I want it to become hue 97.
Yeah. Oh. Huh. Shady level pal, your assets become 16 bit instead of 32 bit? Really? Hmm. Wow. Oh man, I really gotta check this out then. Because that would probably re really, really change this whole. I have to change this technique completely, but. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been searching for some way to do this right. You know what I mean? I want to be able to change the hue of my of my trees dynamically. What's up, the trend dude? Oh. Yeah, I heard about this. What's up, funny funny sack? What are you talking about? Two people donating five twelve. Are you talking about the Kickstarter? If you're talking about the Kickstarter, actually three people did. They get their own NPCs and their own rare collectible items. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So this hue is now 115. It needs to be a little less. 101, a little less. 99. 96. 97, 98. That's right. Yeah, yeah, three people did. God bless their souls. Yep. It was one of them even on the stream right now? Oh, no, I don't think uh, they're on the stream right now, but they're here a lot. They're great people. Oh, damn. Good luck, man. Right? All the, the remakes and all that. Okay, believe it or not, that's kind of the same hue, but it's not really got any shifting going on inside of it. But let's see what happens when I run it now. Man, I want to go back to this other yellowish color. Yeah, Kickstarter's already over, but I can get you a link to it, no problem. All the links are right here at songbringer.com. I'm just referencing them from there. But yeah, here's the link to the Kickstarter. If, you, if you're just joining the stream though and you wanna back this project still, feel free to pre-order the game. The, the pre-ordering gets your name on the credits anyway. So it's a lot like backing the game with the $16 level or on the Kickstarter. I'm just extending that and kind of making it an ongoing crowdfunding campaign by allowing you to become an honorary backer. <clears throat> Who did my website? Uh, I did. I hope you're not, I hope you don't hate it. But if you do hate it, please let me know and I will try and fix it, make it better. Okay, so you can see as I transition from this area to that area, we've got sort of a lighter green for the trees, and then it gets to be a more yellow green for the trees. So I need to do a transition. It needs to be able to transition really nicely from one color to another. Okay, so yeah, let's make these trees yellow again. So randomly, there will be a hue shift.
Oh, how am I going to do that? Random hue shifts. Oh, I can't randomly hue shift with this technique. Oh, man. Man, yeah, I can't, I can't do a hue shift just for one tree because it's all in the shader. I mean, I could set it for each sprite, and I could subclass sprite and pass in a different cu like custom command for each tree, but that's just gonna get cumbersome and also slow down the game. So, oh man, I think, I, uh, what do I do here? I mean, I guess I could just leave the yellow trees as yellow for now. Yeah, I guess I'm going to leave them as yellow. So, I'll keep a backup of this sort of greenish tree here. Oh man, I didn't even think about that until I finally did it. Crazy. Why can't I? Yeah, I was kind of. I hope I was explaining that enough. But yeah, I can't individually shift a hue for a certain tree because the whole shader uses a hue shift value. So I could subclass sprite, and for each sprite, it could pass in a, a separate command. You know, it's a different value for the hue shift for each sprite. But that's something I got away from doing a long time ago and it's actually made the game a lot faster to not do that. So, I don't know, it's just, I really gotta think about this because I gotta look at this palette swapping technique some more too. No way. Really? Damn. Well, I'm, cl I'm glad I still only have Windows 7. What's up, Zoltair? <laughs> what the heck is Cortana? Yeah, see, I could just start duplicating trees, but that's kind of... Uh... Oh, yeah. So yeah, I could make all, all the leaves grayscale and then I could just simply tint it and that would I wouldn't even have to be a hue shift. So that would actually work really that would be a cool technique. But the one thing I'm losing if I do if I do um make it grayscale is I'm losing the difference in hue. So you see this hue here is 86, this hue is 97, this hue over here is 123, this one here in the shade is 124. So I'm losing a lot of that hue differences, and which adds a real nice quality to this to these leaves here. So I would lose out on that. So I think I need to really look at this palette swapping technique. But for now, what I can do is play with the fact that some trees in the dead area will have no leaves. Yo, what's up? Sean is crazy. Oh, it's like Siri, but for Windows. Oh, <laughs> why'd they call it? Cortana. No way, it's really it's the AI from the video game Halo for real? No way. That's crazy. Cool man, good for you. <laughs> it's Cortana. Yeah, I was just saying I can use grayscale, but it's not like I'll lose out. No, it wouldn't. No. Make a map for the hue? That's an interesting idea. A hue map. I think that's kind of what that palette swapping idea kind of is. 
Yeah, so I need I really need to think about that whole the whole thing and kind of come back to that on tomorrow's stream or something. So what I'm gonna do is make it so some of these trees don't have leaves. So if um if the area style oh is dark, so we're gonna go is style dark area style and R3 is less than 128, so I'll put half of the trees. There, so half the trees in the dark area will not have leaves. Mm, yeah. Yeah, totally, me too. You don't need more features. So this is kind of cool though. At least at least it kind of looks good when I shift all of them at once. And I go to this area and it shifts again. Uh, see, there's a couple trees on this area now that have dead leaves. Yeah, I would really have to work on these transitions too. See so yeah, how as I go from this area to that area, the trees lose their leaves all of a sudden and shift their hue. So I want, I want to see that to be more. So let's go with the whole quarter. More contrast in of the colors. Yeah, I agree. Oh, Clippy. Oh, I forgot about Clippy. Oh my God, Clippy. Yeah. I never knew his voice was Gilbert Godfrey. No, it no. The, you lose the hue because there's a hue different. You don't lose the hue. You lose the hue differences. If I were to make this all grayscale, check this out. This color right here is hue 86. See that? 86. You see this sort of sort of like camouflage green color. This hue in the middle is 98. It's a lot more green. See this hue is now shifted to more green. And then here, in this more in the shade, is becoming even more blue. See how bluish this green now is? Same thing with this darker green here, bluish. So that's what I'm saying. If you make it all grayscale, you lose out on all those hue differences. Yeah, I hope I hope that made sense there. All right, Trend dude. Good night, man. All right. Well, okay, I like the fact that this actually has a nice shift going on. Or I like the fact that the, at least I can do trees without leaves. That part is fundamentally, yes, awesome. But now to go into changing it. You know what? Okay, let's just experiment. I'm going to try it with just all grayscale anyways. Let's try it fully grayscale leaves and then I can um, I can just undo it if I don't like it right let's boldly go here Yeah, yeah. I hope yeah, I hope you understand. I hope that made sense there. Right, right. Clippy's in a song. Uh 
Oh, I hope this is not copyrighted. Stupid YouTube ads. Oh, man. <laughs> it looks like you're writing a letter. Do you want some help? It's banned in Germany? Oh. Cool. Oh, I gotta watch this whole video later on. Clippy! I kinda like his, I kinda like the old school Clippy. Okay, um... Yeah, all right, let's do this this way. So, instead of adding this hue shift flag, we'll make this thing have the color, render.sprite.setColor. There, so we're even going to use this this new color mixing technique as well. All right, PMC. Later. And I should also make the the bushes the same thing. Okay, so this area I haven't set a color for the plants yet, so that's why they're all gray. This area is kind of curious why it didn't. Oh, because I would need to set the. I need to set the actual. Yo, what's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? So I would need to make it. Right here, this color needs to be all the way bright now. Delta Heavy is awesome. No, it's definitely not bad if you miss Clippy. I was starting to miss him too, just thinking about him. Oh, okay, so what's going on is it's blending that gray color from the mountains with this green color. And so it w I would really need to add, if I were to go with this technique, it's it's kind of boring because I lose a lot of the depth of the color of the, the, the leaves. Let's first of all, let's set all, all the plants Need to have this color by default, so we'll go here, all the bright. Whoa, crazy man! Yeah, I'm doing great, dude. I'm doing great. I'm working on colors a lot this week, so you can see I've got some color swatches created now, so I can actually individually shift like the hues of plants, rocks, trees, stuff like that. And what I'm working on now is shifting the color, the hues of plants. I want to be able to procedurally change plant colors and stuff like that. And not only affect the trees, but the bushes and everything. And okay, so here's some green. And as I go further south, these should become more, let's make it more obvious. Let's make those more red. And I want some of the hues to be a little different. So let's do that really quick too. So sometimes I want a tree to have a totally different hue. So I'm going to go get the color. And then start in color HSV. And then if 
R2. Is less than a third, which is 85. Wait, is it? What's 255 times a third? Yeah, it is 85. Okay, 85. Then I want the hue to be mod f mod f hsv dot hue minus something. So I want to shift the hue like a lot. Right on. You're drawing with your laptop touchpad? I bet you that's hard. Okay, so if we start with this green color and we shift to more of, that's 97. If we're going down to, to yellow, it would be 61. So. That's a difference of about 36, which is 36 over 360 is a tenth. Okay, so a tenth is about a good hue shift. So I'm gonna try minus 0.1 f if it's less than 85. Mod that by one. Now, else if R2 is greater than 85 times two is 170, Make that greater than or equal to, then HSV is plus. So this will allow you to kind of like shift up the hues of the oh HSV dot H dot H, and this is HSV dot two RGB. Oh man, you're stuck right now with the collision section. All right, okay, first thing, first thing, I know you feel like a failure right now, but that feeling will pass, first of all, right? Realize that, okay? Second thing, you need to take a break. Whenever you start feeling like a failure, you're still feeling like in the, you're stuck or whatever, it's time to take a break. You need, you need to learn how to use your subconscious mind to code for you. And the way you do that is you get as much information about your situation, your problem as you can. You go, you hit a wall, basically right and then you just completely stop thinking about it go do something fun relaxing like watch a movie or go ride your bike or like go take a shower or do anything to get your mind off of programming right or just sleep you know sometimes it's helpful to just go sleep and your subconscious mind will actually work on the problem for you when you come back to it later with a fresh mind you will have much more insight into the problem. And if you don't have much more insight to the problem when you come back to it, it might be that you just need more information. So when, again, once again, when you have that fresh mind, go back and study some collision detection. So go look at some tutorials about how to do collision detection for the game engine you're on and get that information built up. And then once again, relax a little longer. Take another few hours off and then come back to it with a fresh mind again. Once your subconscious has had my the time to digest that information. And that's how you learn to use both halves of your brain, actually all of your brain to code rather than just a small portion, which is your conscious mind. Yeah, I think you're talking about a hue map here, and that's what um, that's what Vlad was suggesting. So there are mul yeah, there's multiple different techniques you could use to kind of get hue shifts going on. Um, but I don't know which one I'll t I'll choose or how I will implement it yet. But I'll have a solution here at some point. Uh, PMC, how much would Songbringer have to sell to be considered a success? I've actually thought about this. Um, I think that I would consider it a success if it sold enough for me to continue porting Songbringer to all the platforms that I need to port it to. Because basically the money for the Kickstarter is running out in December. I need to get it out um, soon after that so I can make enough money to keep porting it. Because if I... If I don't make any money uh, from the Steam version, then I won't, you know, I'll have to go get a job and then I'll be able, I'll just have to port it in my spare time. So the thing is, um, if it makes enough money for me to port it 
And basically, if it makes enough money for me to completely finish Songbringer as well as I would love to, and it gives me a little bit more time to get the next game started up to a Kickstarter phase, I think that would be a success. So it would need to make like a year and a half, maybe t let's say two years worth of income for me to be considered a success. And that's just a minor success, right? There's, there's a lot more levels to that success. And I'm trying not to focus on that too much because I'd rather just let that happen and let, let my, let myself maybe even get, achieve something better. You know, maybe there's something better can be achieved. So it's a weird paradox to put yourself in that state where you can imagine success, but not worry too much about it. Not, not, not hang your hat on it for, you know what I mean? Sorry, I'm getting so deep here. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to think straight now. Don't even try and think, man. This is your time to not think. Thanks, Bully Drink. Cheers, man. Okay, what's up? Oh, I forgot to name this variable. I'm like, why am I getting these errors? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to have trees that hue shift themselves a little bit in each area randomly. And, oh, did I change the hues of the other colors? Oh, yeah, there we go. So some of these trees are a little bit different, but not a lot different. And I still haven't shifted the hues of the, um, the bushes either. Yeah, yeah, Steam does have a winter sale. Yep, they do a they do a sale usually right after Christmas, I think. Yeah, oh yeah, those jumping enemies. They're um they're called the jitters. They jump around. <laughs> That's basically all they do. Yeah, good, 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 man, good. Yes, I highly encourage this. Go watch some TV. Relax. Don't think about your problem at all until maybe even tomorrow. That's what I'd recommend doing. Okay, let's try one more shift. Oh, I actually first I want to do let's let's dial in some colors for the plants that would work, right? So if we're up in the mountains, this is what the plants are currently colored like. Oh yeah, that's what that was, this would work, right? Actually, let's put it more like dead green. Well, now, yeah, I can really see these these sort of more mountainous trees being more yellowish green, like about like that. Okay, sand. Sand will will have no. Sand should have no leaves whatsoever. Okay, there's that. Wait, did I do that wrong? Oh, area style. Not equal to stand. Cool, so never have leaves if you're in the sand.
So the plants can actually be just, whoa, what'd I do? In there, we don't need to even color the plants. Just make them F, 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 F. Actually, if there were plants, they would probably be really yellow. Or brownish, orange, just like that. So let's do that for the color plants there. Mountain, we did that. Dark plants, these ones. Dude, let's do a deep bluish green and even tone down the brightness. And then the light areas. Back to 97. There, okay, I think that's all set up right. And then I also would like a small chance that it shifts, it shifts the hue a lot. There we go, so we got a red tree over there. Interesting. Uh, actually, uh, this might this might actually turn out to be the technique. Yo, Voxen, yeah, what's up? Day two hundred, right? Day two hundred, making this game. Wow, they just fly by sometimes. Okay, so if I were to go all in with this technique, I would even make the lily pads. And the bushes, everything. Let's start with just the bushes though. Alright, so everywhere we use, create the bushes, they're all right around here. Oh man, but I want, I want to love to use this same technique as the tree. Wow, Hotline Miami made two million dollars just on the sale. That's crazy. I'm getting 19 followers a video? Really? Nah. I count, and usually it's more like five to ten. But yeah, any, anyway, anyway you slice it, it's cool to to be building a following for this game. Thanks, man. Good night, PMC. What's up, Deseros? Yo! Yo, 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 yo! Okay, let's make a quick method where I can duplicate this, right? So, we'll call this, um, get plant color. Given an area and an X and a Y, a return of plant color.
Later, Mom Aaron. See you, man. Unless you're saying goodbye to PMC. So yeah, if R is less than, let's, let's go really, really small percentage, then the hue shift Gotta mow your lawn today. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Procrastinate forever. Now, if the R is less than a third, then we're doing shifting only 0.1. Now, if the R is greater than 0 0.95, shift. Oh, these are negative. There we go. Now we got a reusable method we can do to color shift hues for the plants. Less than 0 0.05, negative 2. Less than a third, negative 0.1. Greater than 0 0.95, 0 0.2. Greater than a third, 0.1. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay, and then in the create the tree tile, You can just go render dot sprite set color get plant color there. So now I've got something I can reuse on all these other instances where we have bushes and stuff. All right, let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, no worries, man. Have I made a TTF? Not yet, no. I, I planned on making one though for my website. Yeah. Uh, there's a cool tool online I found where you can create TTF fonts yourself by hand just by pixeling them. So I'm just gonna hand pixel it again, even though I've already got it pixeled. Oh, you know what would be fun too? Is to darken the trees a lot. So if area style is sand. Then we'll make... Um, I'll just set the color for the branches for the bear tree to be gray. Uh-huh. Yeah, graphics vector only, uh-huh. 
Yeah, a lot of font makers are that way, but I found this cool online tool that actually makes pixel fonts. I forget what it's called, but... Nice, right on. Cool, you're a font collector. We should, we should make a documentary about font collectors. Okay, I think this is looking cool. Kind of, right? It's weird that we got this really red tree down there. And I need to make the um, the lily pads the same thing, colored. I guess that's that's from the point two or whatever. Whoa, this whole section is blood. Okay, I don't know if that works to make these really, really dark. Let's try an even darker gray. Bit font maker? No, this was this was not the one, but this is cool. Wow. Does it export to TTF? Oh, you can you can import a TTF. That's cool. Wow. I'll play with that. Maybe that'll allow me to do it faster cuz the one I was on, you had to actually pixel it yourself, you know. Yeah, it does, right? I'm just wondering, see, Lighter Thief, here's the thing I'm worried about, right? I'm worried that I lost the hue shifting that I had before. Like, if I go and I turn off what I just did here to make these gray, I'm losing out on all these subtle color depth hues, hue shifts I'm doing inside these leaves. Um, I'm glad you're here because I really wanted to tell um, to tell you because, see what I mean? This, this hue is 86. This hue is 97. This hue, 99. This darker hue, though, is going to be like 123. Uh, that's 102. This one's like 120. So I'm totally losing out on all these hue shifts by making it gray. So I don't know. But so let's, let's take a look at the result again in the game, though, to kind of judge it. Yeah, it is kind of looking good, right? Yeah, maybe I will do with this technique because this is a lot more simple than um, than what I had before. Let's see what we got over here. Oh yeah, see all these look a lot more dead. But the branches of these trees are not black yet. That's weird. And I don't know what's up with these red ones right here. That's like a little bit too much. And it should be blending correctly because we're using a color mix. So I got to figure out what that that issue is. Let's run around in God mode. We can see you better. Sweet. Oh well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad this is this idea is getting some good feedback here. Um, let's see what it's like if we run around in God mode and just play like play around on the whole world a little bit. Actually, yeah, yeah. We'll just run around first. I was gonna say I should fix that red tree thing, but uh, you know, let's leave it as it is for now. Whoa, it's so crazy how red these, how did this tree get so red? Like what color is it combining with? And then and I get here and it's not even red at all.
Hmm. Yeah, see the one thing is you're not really, you can't really tell that you're missing out on that color depth that much. Because the color variation kind of makes up for it a little bit. But I don't know, I, I think in general these are kind of looking a little bit washed out almost. They're not as vibrant as they used to be. Maybe that's what the depth missing is doing. But this looks really cool having all these dead trees and these darker areas. Definitely looking cool there. <laughs> They're lipstick trees. Yeah, it's a feature. It's not no bug. Okay, where is the desert? I think this is... Oh, here's the desert. Oh, that's why the trees aren't black. Is because I did the desert as black trees. I forgot to do... Oh, okay. Okay, I can, make, I can fix that now. Uh, yeah. So this is getting close to the, um... Yeah, I might do a hue map. I don't know. This is this technique is close to what what I want, but it might be better to do a hue map or a palette swapping. So I'm getting close to the end of my stream here. Actually, I'm probably just gonna run it one more time. I'll fix these. I'll fix these dark trees here, so... Oh, that's supposed to be area style. Yeah. So uh, it's getting lost because um, I made it grayscale and then I'm coloring it in this, the code. So why can't I un... Oh, I lost those edits. But anyways, I made all this grayscale. Make it grayscale again. Right, so all of this, I just went image, adjustments, hue saturation. Oh. So I just sucked all the saturation out of these just to make them grayscale. And then, so they're procedurally colored in the game. They're just tinted in the game. And so that's why they look the colors look a little bit more flat because I'm I'm losing out on the, all those beautiful little hue shifts. So Yeah, it's not really a hue shifter. I'm not using I'm not even using that hue shifter technique anymore. I'm just using a pure coloring OpenGL. So I'm setting the color of the vertex and making it grayscale and that's what gives it this current look. Your brother doesn't think the mental labor program can be more intense than physical labor of some jobs? Thoughts? Uh, yeah, I would definitely say mental labor is um, is laborious on the on your system, but it's a little bit different. It's 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 not like you're using all your muscles, but it it can tire you out just as much. So I don't know. It's different kinds of intense. Yeah, right. It's like apples and oranges, really. But really, but it's it's just as possible to be just as tired from mental work as from physical work. It's just a different kind of tired. No, see, I can't do that. I can't I can't do a slight hue shift within each color tint because it's already grayscale. 
unless I were to go, I guess I could create some special shader, which would kind of automatically determine a hue map based on the gradient of lightness. So lighter hues would be more yellow and darker hues would be more blue. I mean, I guess maybe that's what I'll do. I don't know. So crazy. <laughs> Check that out. What's up, baby? Yeah. Okay, let's see what this looks like with the darker with darkening those those bare trees. Ah, see there, now we're having a much darker area here, but it's maybe a little bit too dark. So maybe more like 192. All right, yeah, so this is the last time I'm running the game for today's stream. Um, I got a lot done experimenting more with color, especially with these plants today. Um, and thanks for all your feedback and everything today. It's been cool to um, to work through this process and everything. So what I got to do is really think about how to do this hue shifting technique for these trees. Right now I've done a grayscale technique and it's kind of lost some of the, the color depth that I, that I had there. So... Yeah, I'm, I want to try some other, I definitely want to try some other techniques. I want to try either palette swapping or hue mapping to do these this whole shifting and stuff. So that'll be tomorrow or tonight or something like that. I'll be getting to that. So um, so yeah, but I do like that. I do really love the fact that there's a lot more different hues for, for these um, trees and stuff. So that's cool. I can't wait for the game to be have. It would be nice to have a, a technique which has still has the color depth, but also has the color variations, and programmatically done so I can do it in procedurally in code. So, <clears throat> yep. Next stream is going to be. Um, next stream is always the next day, so I, I stream every day, um, pretty much, and I usually start around three to four, five sometimes p.m. Pacific time, so it'll be tomorrow afternoon about the same time as this. So, yeah, they do, right? All right, you guys, so yeah, until next time, enjoy your evenings and whatever, and we'll see you next time. Enjoy.